Oh, boy, I got to put my... There we go. Come on, camera, focus. See, it picks up the glare on my glasses and it doesn't focus. If I take my glasses off, it focuses just fine. Weird. Okay. Hello, everyone. Semi-retired Bob here. I talk about the carnivore diet. All things related to the carnivore diet and miscellaneous odds and ends. Happy Friday, everybody. We made it to the end of another week. I hope everybody out there is having a good day. Let me know if you can hear me. I know Rick's out there. Charger Mopar is there. He's cutting up an old station wagon today. So that ought to be kind of fun. Hopefully he's catching it on video so we can watch. Hmm. Forgot to get a drink before I went live. Okay, sorry about that. And he says that the engine and the transmission are still good. Well, that's good. And if I'm not mistaken, Rick, that's a Mopar kind of a station wagon. So it should probably be a really good engine. Uh, let's see here. John is here. Hello, John. Said sound and video are both good. Excellent, excellent. Always glad to hear. And Keith L. is here, and he can hear me. Great. Fantastic. And for those of you, this might be your first live stream. The reason I'm not always facing straight into the camera, and many times when I'm reading, I look over here, because my big screen is over here. If I look this way, straight into the camera, I'm trying to read the comments on my laptop, which is not a very big laptop. Over here, I have a 32-inch um, editing monitor, so I can see everything really well over here. And that's why I'm always looking off this way instead of straight into the camera. Hi, Bob, coming in loud and clear. Thank you. And R3C0, I don't know what that's supposed to say, so we'll call you foodie. How's that work out? And Brenda's here. Hello, Brenda. Glad you made it. And Patricia is here from Chile, Indiana. Yeah, it's chilly here in Omaha today, too. It's uh, Tomorrow's video was filmed in yesterday's sunshine. So it's cold and kind of yucky out there. After being 85 this weekend up at the Minish Golf Course, it's 45 today, and they're calling for freezing overnight tonight. So we'll see what happens. Could even get some snow. We'll see. Yes, it's a Mopar, which means it's a good motor. And let's see here. I did make a video of my living room showing my setup, how I use trash, a trash-picked TV as a monitor. Excellent. Excellent. I'll have to check that out. Has, has it been posted yet? I haven't really looked at a lot of YouTube stuff today yet because I've been busy doing other stuff. Hi, Bob, from the north of Norway. Hello, Rita. I hope you're having a great day. Oh, okay. It reads as recovering foodie. Okay. I'm not good at this whole capital other stuff. In South Dakota. So you're just my neighbor to the north. I posted a couple weeks back, I think. I'll have to go back and look to see what all I've missed. I've missed a lot of stuff in the last couple of weeks because I've been busy. But first order of business today, not really business, well, kind of business. Um, I forgot to hit the right thing here, so let me put my disclaimer up that I'm not a doctor. Nothing you hear on this program should be considered medical advice. Please consult your doctor before starting any diet or exercise program. There, we got that out of the way. Um, You've probably seen, if any of you follow Keto Chow, you know I, I promote Keto Chow primarily to get you guys a discount on their electrolyte products. But just in case, you know, like if you need to have a world surgery or something comes up, there's always room to have something else in case of an emergency or you're traveling or whatever, but the Keto Chow shakes. And if you guys remember, the very first Keto Chow promotion I did eight, nine months ago was the birthday cake. And it was really good. That was a limited time um, 
flavor. Well, just so you all know, the limited time flavors have hit for the summer. And included in their limited time grouping this time are all, all four of these flavors I have tried. The birthday cake, which I like really well. The um, orange creamsicle, which is okay. I don't find it spectacular. The uh, chocolate malt, which again, I thought was really, really good. And the butterscotch, which was okay, but I'm not a huge fan of butterscotch. So just so you're aware, I have to let you know about it. There are the those four flavors are back on the Keto Chow website. If you use Keto Chow, whether it be for Keto Chow shakes, the regular ones that are made with milk proteins, or the Keto Chow core that are made with beef protein isolate, or their entire line of electrolyte products, which are now being marketed under the brand Salty, S-A-L-T-T, -T. you can find a link to that down in the description. And my code, semi-retired Bob, will save you, I think it's 10%. You get 10% off and you can use, they've changed recently in the last few months. Instead, it used to just be my code was good for your first purchase, but you can use my code every time you make a purchase from Keto Chow now. And so that it helps you out even more. So that is that is our first order of business for the day. Me talking about the new, not new, but re-released Keto Chow flavors, which I think are all pretty good. Like I said, the butter, if you like butterscotch, the butterscotch was really good. I'm just not a huge fan of butterscotch. The chocolate malt, I really like. And the birthday cake, I really like. The orange creamsicle was okay. Dale is here. Hello, Dale. Glad you made it. Thanks for stopping in. And Jeannie is here. Uh, what did you have to say? Why are all the electrolyte concoctions in disgusting? They should have a duck flavor. Well, they don't have a duck flavor. They do have a no flavor. It's called naked, I believe, or clean or something like that. Naked is element and clean is is salty. I don't remember which is which, but they do have a non-flavored one. The flavored electrolyte pack that I use is Booyah Berry, because when they sent me my sample pack of the stuff to try, I mixed that, and we'll talk about Cerule products here in a moment, but they, uh, I've always said that the, the collagen active drink that I get from from Cerule, it's not good, but it's not bad. It, it tastes kind of like that flavor of Kool-Aid that your mom always had in the fridge because it was the cheapest one on the shelf, and it just wasn't a very good flavor, but it was okay, and you drank it because that was the Kool-Aid you had in the house for that time. Well, the, the collagen active sort of tastes like that, but I made an amazing discovery in testing the different flavors. You mix the... Uh, package of the salty Booyah Berry into the collagen active drink when you mix it up in your glass. It's really, really good. I highly recommend that. And I've been using that as my morning beverage for the last couple, three days. I will let you know if I feel a difference. Because, you know, electrolytes are a really big topic of discussion. Some people say you need them all the time. Some people say, well, just when you're transitioning, you need more because it will help. Um, I don't know. I have no answer. But if I notice a marked improvement in how I feel, which would be pretty hard to do because I've been feeling pretty good the last few weeks. But if I happen to notice a marked improvement or marked disimprovement, I'll let you guys know about that in a future video. How many miles do you walk in a day? It varies depending on the day. Um, my average walks that I do, the, the 9 to 10 minute videos, those are about 3 quarters of a mile. Um, I usually go around the big block at least once. That's a mile and a half. Sometimes I'll do two laps around the big block. I haven't been recording all of those. 
Um, if I had to pick an average, I'd say it's about an average of a mile and a half to two miles right now because I'm doing so much other stuff, starting to work back at the golf course. As you'll see in tomorrow's video, I had to cut my grass. Um, and that's a lot of walking. I it My front yard didn't really need a lot of cutting just yet, but it was starting to get shaggy in spots. And the neighbor's two houses up was really shaggy. And I decided to cut it. It was either yesterday or the day before. I don't remember which day it was now. It would have been Wednesday I cut it because I'm in advanced class on Tuesday. Walked on Wednesday and cut the grass Wednesday afternoon because as they predicted by the weather, we've been getting, you know, it's much colder now, but we've been getting rain and then sunshine and then rain and then sunshine. And it's supposed to stay in that cycle multiple times a day for the next several days. And then I would have had to wait for the grass to dry out. And by that time, it would have been really unmanageable for the electric mower I have. So I wanted to make sure I stayed ahead of it. That's why after I did my walk on Wednesday and got that video uploaded, I went back out and cut the grass. So, but yeah, that's, I'd say a mile and a half to two miles on average when I'm doing other stuff. If I'm just going out to go walk, to, to get a big walk in, my average big walk is about five and a half to six miles. Rick, I'd go for the duck one. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is happening this fall. I stayed in town over the winter to save money, and I'll be working for the miniature golf course again this summer, which will let me save even more money so that at the very end of miniature golf season, which depending on the weather will be sometime um, mid to late September, is when Dave won't need me anymore for the year. And I plan on being fully loaded and ready to go. I'm going to start putting out some videos on fixing up the trailer and loading up the trailer and the tools that I bought and all that kind of stuff as I load the stuff into the trailer and the back of my truck. I have just a few things because I want to get, I've got a 50 gallon water barrel in the back of my truck, but because of the capper on it, I can't get the nozzle on the top of the barrel. So I'm going to move just for the trip down to Texas. I'm going to take the water barrel and move it into the trailer at the front and go down with, I probably won't fill it up with a full 50 gallons of water. I'll probably put 25 or 30 gallons in it just to hold the barrel in place and give me a little extra weight in the nose of the trailer. And then once I get down there, of course, I will have to use the water out of the barrel to get it out of the trailer. But I'm planning on buying a uh, one of those. You've probably seen them. It's called a portable garage. It's basically a big tent, but it comes with steel poles and tie downs and all that kind of stuff. I can get a... Uh, a 10 or... Yeah, it's like a 10 by 20 foot portable garage and I'm going to need that pretty much the second I get down there because with all the stuff I have that needs to go with me in one trip the trailer is going to be so full of stuff that I'm not going to be able to sleep in the trailer or you know I could sleep in the seat of my truck of course but on tap for the very first day I'm down there is to have the the portable garage loaded last so that I can set it up, stake it down, and then unload everything out of the truck and the trailer into that to start organizing and and doing stuff. So that's gonna that's gonna happen pretty much as soon as the putt putt season is over. I hope to be fully loaded and ready to go so that I'll work at putt putt one day and then drive to Texas the next. Kool-Aid and Tang were so nasty. Yeah, they were, but it's what we had. Um, Mom tried to push that on us once or twice 
with the old team, but uh, that didn't go over very well in our house either. So it, she only bought it one time, and since none of us would drink it, she didn't buy it again. Do you know anyone near your new property? No, because there's nobody near my new property. The closest road, well, you can see the road. This is the road into the property. That's the county road right there. Six and a half miles south of that is I-10, and then it's another 10 miles into Van Horn, and I don't know anybody down there. I plan on, that's one of the first things I plan on doing because before I actually start unloading, I'm going to drive through Van Horn, and it'll probably take me a day or two there. I have to go to the post office and get an address assigned, not because I expect them to deliver mail out here, because I'm sure they won't. But I have to, I'll have to have a physical street address assigned so that when I go to get deliveries from Lowe's or Home Depot or anything like that, they have a place to deliver it. And I need to go to the courthouse um, to make sure that all of the, the deed stuff is on file properly and the, the location. And if I have to get a survey done, I'll get that set up. And then I'll get out of the property and take my little GPS unit. I don't expect it to be exact, but if the surveying has already been done just for the corner posts, I can use my GPS marker to find the survey markers for the corners. And I'll put some stakes in the ground so I know exactly where everything's at. And then I'll start figuring out what goes from there. But no, I don't know anybody down there. But as I was saying... To find things that I might need, I plan on finding a diner in town. So that basically I want to find the diner where all of the old guys go to sit and, and solve all the world's problems over their morning coffee. And I want to go down and introduce myself to them and get to talking with them. Because, you know, if I can find one of them that happens to own a tractor with a a blade attachment or a small bulldozer or a small backhoe or something like that, hiring somebody from the local area to do a little bit of earthwork for me will be much quicker than me digging it all by shovel. If I have to go to, say, El Paso to hire a piece of heavy equipment, I'm just going to plan on it taking a whole year to dig things out with a shovel because the part of the cost of having someone do heavy equipment work on your property is the distance they have to travel to get there. And if they're just coming 16 miles out of Van Horn, that won't be so bad. But if I have to hire them from a, for a hundred, from a hundred miles away in El Paso, that could get really bad. So I'm not going to spend that kind of money. I hope that answers your question, Keith. Uh, addicted to antlers is here late, but here. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for stopping by. And the feral grandma is here. Hello to her. Jeannie, you are making this new lifestyle in middle age. I'm rooting for your success in homesteading. Middle age, um, I'm probably on the I know I have gotten in much better shape over the last two years, and I'm much healthier than I was two years ago, but I suspect I'm still in, would be considered old age with the time that I probably have left, considering I've already had a triple bypass surgery. But we'll see how it goes. I am looking forward to getting out there, and if nothing else, sitting in my trailer on what is my piece of land where nobody can bother me, and finally get some peace and quiet. Good idea. Someone has to have a box. Yeah. See, because if I can get, even if it's just a brief stop, I need like an eight foot wide, 40 foot long, five inches deep space dug out where I'm going to put the shipping container. And that would probably take me several weeks digging it by hand. If I can get somebody to knock that out in an afternoon, I can get the shipping container a lot earlier. Um, it just has to go down. I want it to go down five inches because 
I'm right on the line between no frost line and a five inch frost line. So I'm not expecting to have to deal with a lot of shifting. So I figure I'll fill that area with about two inches of gravel and then put a big sheet of plastic over top of that and then put about another three inches of gravel on top of that and pack it all into place and then set the shipping container down on top of that. And that should make for a very fine foundation for my permanent house in Texas. Um, but yeah, someone someone down there's got to have a bobcat or a tractor with a, a scoop bucket on it or something that they'd be willing to come out and do some work for, you know, even if it, if it cost me because they're there, if it cost me six, seven hundred dollars for a day of work, I'm OK with that because I'm thinking if they have a small bobcat or something like that, I could get the foundation for my shipping container dug and a small like half acre to three quarter acre pond dug as well. And I can once the hole is in the ground. I can finish, you know, packing it in and treating it so that it actually catches water. But that will also save me when it comes time to do the earth bags on the outside of the shipping container to insulate it. I will already have some big piles of dirt from where they dug my pond and dug the foundation for my shipping container. I'll have that dirt to use around the outside of the shipping container. So, you know, I'm willing to spend even up to about a thousand dollars to get all that work done in a day or two rather than spending an entire year hand digging it with a shovel. I'm not willing to spend the thousand dollars or so it would cost to get them to the property from El Paso and then another thousand dollars for a day's work. So that's that's where I'm coming from on that. Grassroots research at a diner. Great idea. Yeah, I figure that's where that's 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 where it's at. You got to find the locals. He says just buy an old tractor or dozer. You know, I actually thought of that, but now, now granted, his place is a lot bigger than mine, so I can see his news his need for it. But if you there's a a channel, it's a, Sean Overton is the owner, and he's building the dust up ranch. He's trying to turn his I think it's 300 acres into a desert forest. And he bought himself a bulldozer. And it wasn't super expensive. It's more money than I have. I'm, I certainly can't even afford an old used tractor or an old dozer. But I was considering trying to save up for something like that. And then he bought himself a bulldozer. And I've been watching his videos. And he spends more time making it run and fixing it than he does actually using it. So I don't think old tractors and old dozers, unless you actually know how to work on them, is a great idea. I don't know how to work on them myself. I'm sure I could learn, but that would be, uh, no, it's just not going to happen. I know you have something like that, Rick. If you want to load it up on a trailer or in the back of your van and come on out to Texas for a, a few weeks or a month, I'm I will feed you. I'll take care of the food while you're out there. You're only a handful of years older than me. Yeah, but Rick, how many days in your life have you been critically sick? And how many triple bypass surgeries have you had? Yes, I am only a handful of days older than you, but that's where it's at. Yep, and I was actually just getting ready to talk about that, Robin. I'm glad you're here today. And Keith, let's all buy lots around Bob so we can keep an eye on him. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. But what Robin is talking about here. Three weeks from today is Friday, May the 10th. This is the big announcement that was in the, the title of today's live stream. And there are now 32 of us in here. 
So let me say that three weeks from today is my 61st birthday, the day after the day after my two-year carnivore. So May the 9th is my two-year on carnivore, and May the 10th is my 61st birthday. That Friday, I'm going to have a special live stream. It will still start at 2.30, but I'm planning on it running for about two hours in three weeks. And I have, as of right now, three guests lined up, one of which is Robin. And we're going. I'm going to divide them up into sections, have them come on during that live stream, and we're going to do live Q&A with various people. Right now, we're going to have Robin. And we're going to have Charger Mopar, and we're going to have Dave, Dave Mack from Japan. Dave will be later in the show because we've been doing our live streams, and he's just getting up in the morning. So he's going to try and get here for about the 4 to 4.30 um, time slot. So he'll Dave Mack will be here for the last half hour. And if I get one more guest, I'll put them in there. But I'm planning on having Rick here basically as a co-host for the whole thing and then whenever robin wants to stop in if she wants to be here for the whole thing we can do that too i'm not really gonna you know set up certain time slots just letting you know dave mack will be here later in the program because he will just be getting up and we're going to take all of your carnivore questions live for about two hours have a little birthday party everybody can say happy birthday to me don't if you happen to still have my address that had been posted, don't send anything to that address because I just shut that mailbox down yesterday because it's uh, I didn't feel like renewing it for a full year when I'm going to be in another five months or so. I'm going to be in Texas and I'll have a permanent post office box in Texas, which I will share with everybody. So please don't send stuff to the the address, if you happen to have the old address on 132nd Street that I posted once upon a time, because that address is no longer valid. And let's see here. I have only old equipment, but you know I fix everything myself, and I'll be using my Bob to move an engine and transmission soon. Yes, indeed. Now let's see what I skipped here. I'm pretty familiar with Texas. You should be able to find some quiet out there. Yes. Yes, indeed. And Rick can make any profit on anything. Yeah, I understand. And Rick can probably fix anything, too. Yes, yes, he can. B. Rose, hello. Happy to catch you live. I'm glad you're here as well. And again, when it comes, you know, don't forget, mark down on your calendars three weeks from today, my big two-hour live stream for my birthday, for my two-year anniversary. I'm going to have guests. We're going to sit here. We're going to answer your questions live. We're just going to shoot the stuff about whatever. Um, so it ought to be pretty good. And we are up to 34 people in here today. That's that's pretty doggone good for one of my live streams. When you are poor, you have to be resourceful. I understand that, Rick. I understand that a lot. You'll be 56 in June. So, yeah, you're five years younger than I am because I'm turning 61 in May. You are correct, Bob. We bought an old dozer. We need a part that you can't find anywhere. It cost $8,500. Delivery of the off-grid property was $4,000. It runs for now. Yeah, see, that's... I just, I would rather, rather than go through all the headaches, even if it's, like I said, even if I have to spend $1,000 for somebody local to come out and dig some holes for me, that's still going to be a much better deal than trying to do the equipment myself. And Robin spilled beans. Congrats, Bob. You've influenced a lot of people. I appreciate that, Jeannie. But yes. And yes, you were the first interview for several YouTube channels. And I think it would be kind of fun having you on. If you've got, I understand if you can't get the full two hour time block free, Rick, because 
you never know what your busy is going to be doing. But if you happen to be able to make it for the full two hours, that's great. Same with you, Robin. Um, I'm just as happy to spend the screen time with all of you. And I think StreamYard holds up to six people. So if a couple more people want to come in and, and be co-hosts for that day, I'm perfectly okay with that. I actually started working on the thumbnail here. So if I get all three of you, I think I still have your pictures on file somewhere, but just so I don't have to search for them, if I could get all three of you to send me a picture that I can put in the thumbnail, that would be great. And Rob is here. Greetings and happy birthday. Cheers. Yes, my birthday is three weeks away. I'll be 61. And this is probably the last time you're going to see this hair up here because as it's coming up on uh, dance concert season, I'm going to go ahead and cut my hair off again because it's coming up on summer also. And I've got a, a hat to wear. And hats tend to stay on when you're dancing better if you have no hair underneath of them. Because at 61 years old, I refuse to go with one of those pieces of elastic chin straps to hold it on. Excavator is best if you can find one. Yeah, whatever it is, I have no idea how hard the ground is going to be out there. Most of that section of the desert is hit and miss. If you look at Sean Overton's, the Dust Up Ranch, who is basically, he would he's only a about 10 and a half, 11 miles straight south of me, but there's mountains in the way, so you have to go around. So it's actually would be a several hour drive to get to his place from my place. Um, as he's digging things on his property, there's a lot of rocks in the ground. But if you watch Frugal off grid, who's in the same type of terrain in Northern Arizona, he can only go down about six inches before he runs into caliche, which is a really hard packed clay kind of earth, which is really hard to dig through. Um, so just it, I don't know what I'm going to run into. I won't know that till I get down there and start sticking a shovel in the ground. I'm sure I can be available the whole time. Excellent. I'm looking forward to having you here, Rick. Like I said, I'll be sending out about May the 1st, I'll be sending out the, the invites on that so that you'll have it for getting into StreamYard and all that. Let's see here. I assume you'll have to put in solar as one of your first projects in Texas. Um, not so much put in as set out. I have a total of 400 watts of solar, two of them in hard panels, two of them in foldable panels. I'll probably build a little bit of a rack to put the two hard panels on. And if there's a sale on hard panels before I go south, I'll probably pick up two more because I have the connectors to put four solar panels with standard Anderson connectors together and run through the wall of my trailer into the power station that's going to be running my freezer, which is the, the main power. And then I have smaller power stations that I'll charge my power tools and stuff with. And those can be, those foldable solar panels can be set up as I'm using them. Um, I haven't exactly decided whether I'm going to go with a big bank of solar panels on a hard rack or if I'm going to incorporate the solar panels into the roof I build over the shipping container. But I do have solar already to go and it's just a matter of setting it out and plugging it all in and if it gets windy i'll have to come up with some kind of a, a way to brace it in place um but yes that will be one of the very early projects because i plan i plan on having my freezer in my trailer plugged into the power station full of meat so that i don't have to go grocery shopping the second i get down there um and then, so I, I'm a, my, my power station will run my freezer for three and a half to five days, depending on the ambient temperature and that kind of stuff with no solar input. So it should give me plenty of time to get down there, get the stuff I need done, get out to the property, 
and set up a couple of solar panels to start recharging the thing. So we'll see how that goes. But yes, solar is going to be one of my first projects, but I think I've got all the parts I need to just throw it together. I don't think I'm going to get a generator. I might. It depends on what else I get. Hang on just a second. Um, I, uh, I've looked at a lot of generators, and one that would come up with enough power to run the things I want to run is going to cost about, you know, between twelve and fifteen hundred dollars, and then you still have to pay for fuel to put in it to run it. For fifteen hundred dollars, I can buy another generator, just another battery bank, like a power station, like I have now, which would give me two three thousand watt power stations, and I could get that plus another four solar panels for the same $1,500. So I will probably not get a generator that I have to put fuel in because I would just as soon, for the same amount of money, buy another portable power station and two or four more solar panels to run it. And we're up to 39. If you haven't hit the like button, please go ahead and hit that like button. Personally, I would have enjoyed being here 100 years ago when swampland was cheap. I prefer swamps to deserts. I understand. Rick. I get that a lot. And Gail is here. I watch Sean Overton all the time. It's so cool that your land is not too far from him. Yeah, I uh, I talk to Sean. Not, I won't say on a regular basis, but we've traded emails several times. And once I'm down there, I am, after I get things partially situated, I will probably make a trip down to his ranch just to see how he's doing stuff and uh, and maybe a little back and forth there. Hopefully I can talk him into coming by sometime and giving me some suggestions as well. But like I said, as the crow flies, it's only about 10 miles. Um, as you can go there, like I said, it'd be a good three, maybe even four hour trip to get over there because the roads, he's on the other side of the mountains, and there's no roads through the mountains straight down. So you either have to go over to Sierra Blanca and down or around the other way. So it's his property is much harder to get to than mine. He has to, his, his trip out to his property is several hours on a dirt path winding through mountain terrain. I have to take I-10 to my exit, go north on the county road for six and a half miles, and I'm there. Now, this county road right here doesn't look like it's fantastic. It's probably going to be a slow, bumpy ride, but at least it's there and it has an exit right off of I-10. So my property, in comparison to Sean's, is very, very easy to get to. You have a backup communication system planned. Um, what I have is um, one of those trouble things that hikers carry with them that allows you to send text messages and you can push the panic button and they'll send search and rescue out for you. And that has a monthly fee, so it's not actually activated, but I'll be taking that with me to Texas and using it that way. Looking at the at the maps, my phone should work just fine there. I'm expecting my T-Mobile home internet to work there. If it doesn't, I'll have to get a Starlink, but I'm expecting the T-Mobile to work there. When does not yeah. I know I actually knew that. If part is, it might be circular. I mean, it might not. Yeah. Well, I'm not too worried about it. There's going to be some storms. That's just part of desert living. But 
there's storms no matter where you're at. And I have plans for the higher winds. I have um, four of those. Well, I don't have them yet. They're on my Amazon wish list, and I'm going to. That's one of the things I have to get before I go down there. I have I'm going to have some of those. You hook it up to your electric drill, and it's like a sh big screw that goes into the ground. They're designed for holding like that portable garage that I'm going to buy in place. And I want them to, for that, but I also want them to attach probably three points of contact on my trailer, two where the on the front and then one right in the middle on the back. I want to anchor the trailer to the ground with chains and these screws that go into the ground because it is just a five by 10 cargo trailer and I don't want it to get knocked over by the wind. It has feet on it, but the winds could get heavy enough to blow that thing over. So I do want to attach to the ground with screw-in bolts and chains. And let's see here. Starlink has been excellent for us just in case you switch. Yeah, and I don't have the T-Mobile yet either. I'm I'm at home. I'm on uh, Telechoice, I think it's what it's called. Or it used to be US West, but now it's Telechoice or something or other. But I'm on a, a gig line here. But that's... Uh... Well, I'll just have to see how it goes when I get down there. Um I'm hoping that I can do, I'm hoping I'm in range, even if I have to mount an antenna on top of my trailer and point it at the closest cell tower. Because if I look at the map, I'm right between the lines of 5G and what they call 5G extended. So my whole, uh, one of their home internet boxes should pick up a signal there. And if I have to put an outside antenna up to strengthen it, I will do that. Um, because the T-Mobile home internet is $50 a month and Starlink is significantly more expensive. Plus, it's a lot more money to buy a Starlink than it is to get the T-Mobile home internet box. So, like I said, I won't know that till I get down there, but I'm hopeful that that will work because the T-Mobile will be a lot cheaper. And if there's an extra 100 bucks that I don't have to spend on internet, then I'll have an extra $100 a month to spend on all of the other stuff that I need to spend money on when I'm down there. Um, we'll just have to wait and see how it goes because having internet at my property is not an option. I have to have it because I make YouTube videos. I watch YouTube videos. I don't actually have a real TV. I watch all of my TV through streaming services. That I don't have any of right now because the only time I pay for YouTube TV is when I'm watching college football for those three months in the fall. And then I don't do that. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. So I'm a tap dancer. Now I'm a tap dancer. I've, I've done all forms of dance. For those that don't know, back when I was but a wee lad, um, I spent several years doing ballet first at the Columbus Metropolitan Ballet Company and then two seasons with the New York Ballet Company. So I was I was fairly good at dancing once upon a time. Now I just tap dance because I still love to dance, but I don't have the body for ballet anymore, so I like tap dancing. I've always liked tapping even better. Anyway, yes, and Jeannie knew that. And there's actually, in my members only section, there's a few little clips of me tap dancing in the members only videos. In fact, I should probably get another one of those ready, ready, because for the last month and a half, all my members have really gotten is early access to videos that I put out. But we are currently out of comments, and we still have about 15 minutes left in today's live stream. So I'll go over a couple of things. The big announcement, of course, is next week. Not next week. Three weeks. May the 10th, two-hour live stream with guests to celebrate my two-year 
carniversary and my 61st birthday. So be sure and mark that down on your calendar. Keto Chow has some flavors back on the back in stock. I recommend the reason I liked the birthday cake, which is one of the flavors that's back in stock, is did it taste like birthday cake? Well, maybe a little bit, but when I think of good vanilla, the birthday cake flavor is what I think of. It's a really good vanilla-y flavor. And that's not to say that their vanilla and their vanilla cream are not good because they are. But I, as a just pretty much a straight vanilla, I like the birthday cake flavor better. The chocolate malt is amazing. The orange creamsicle is okay. I mean, it tastes like an orange creamsicle. So if you like them, you'll probably like that. And the butterscotch tasted like butterscotch. It's just butterscotch is not one of my favorite flavors. So I didn't get any of those. Uh, let's see here. Let's see what Jeannie had to say here. I can't see looking that way. I have to look that way. Oh, yes. Yes. It was a very long time ago. I'm almost 60 now, so gosh, that would have been 45 years ago and then some. I started dancing when I was three, and I was in ballet companies from about age 10 to age 15 or so. I wasn't typing because I am cutting with a torch. Yeah. You, you want to be careful. You don't want to have your computer and your cutting torch get together and do that kind of stuff. Oh, yes, yes. Um, they have the, the products that I like. I talked about this earlier, and I can talk about this again. Um, the, the daily minerals that were designed by Dr. Barry for Keto Chow they have put into a capsule formula so that you can take it with you on the go. And I use those. Now, the recommended serving size on those is like six capsules or a whole ounce of the, the liquid. I don't use that much because I don't think I'm that deficient in anything. And I don't think I'm deficient in anything. But just as a just because, I do take one or two of the capsules or... 15 or 20 drops of the daily mineral in my morning drink or with my morning drink just to make sure I'm getting all of the minerals that I need. They also have the flavored packets of the uh, electrolyte mix. And they sent me, when they first came out, they sent me the variety pack, which is called All of the Things. And they were all fairly good. I didn't care for the chocolate or the caramel. The one I like the best is the Booyah Berry. And I did just get another package of just Booyah Berry in. And I think it's it's a, it's like 30 bucks for 33 of them or 33 bucks for 30 of them. I don't remember which. It's, it's not super expensive. And what I've been doing with the Booyah Berry is I also use Cerule collagen active. And that's what I drink in the morning. I take a cold glass of water, mix a collagen active into it. And as I have said many times, it sort of tastes like that flavor of Kool-Aid you didn't really like as a kid, but you drank it anyway because that's the flavor of Kool-Aid that your mom made that week. Um, it tastes kind of like that, but I take the collagen active, get it mixed up, and then I mix a package of Booyah Berry into it as well. That way I'm getting my collagen and my electrolytes for the day. And it tastes wonderful mixed together like that. I've only been, I just got my package in a few days ago. So I think it's, this is the third or fourth morning that I've done that. So I, uh, I will let you know if I notice a big difference now that I'm taking a packet of electrolytes every day. I tried the citrus. It tasted like Sprite. Hmm, interesting. I don't know if 
I don't know if that's good or bad for you. I actually I didn't mind any of the flavors. I liked all of the fruity slash citrusy one, but the booyah berry was definitely my favorite. So that's what I ordered a, a complete package of. I got a package of just booyah berry in. Um, and since I haven't, oh, there's another one there. Hi, all going out to dinner tonight. Someone else will cook a steak for me. Have a great week, Jeannie. We'll see you next week. Thanks for stopping by. We've got about 10 minutes left, so let me change the banner here. Now, you guys know, I've talked about this before. Many of you have heard this, and I know several of you in the chat are either your own distributors or are buying from somebody else. But just in case, the things we need to remember about Cerul. Our body's natural healing mechanism is the release of our own adult stem cells. We start doing this from the moment we're born. Our bone marrow puts out adult stem cells. And these stem cells float around in our blood, handing out these care packages to help minorly damaged things get repaired. Then when they see a cell that is heavily damaged, they bind to that cell and convert themselves into a brand new cell of that type and take the place of the damaged cell. That's how our healing system works. Unfortunately, after the age of 18, the amount of stem cells that our body produces begins to go down. That's why as we get older, wounds will sometimes heal slower. Well, there is a product available at semiretirebob.cerule.com that can reverse this process of stem cell production declining and boost your stem cell production back to when you were younger. I'm not asking you to go to the website and buy anything today. I'm asking you to go to the website and along the top menu, here, let me pull the site up real quick. I don't think I have it set up for sharing. But if I pull the website up, I can tell you exactly what tab to hit to find the science that I'm talking about here. Give me just another second. There we go. But along the, oh, come on. Now, of course, because I'm trying to find it in a hurry when normally my connection is blazing fast. There it goes. But let's see here. Ah, uh, shoot skis. Now, of course, I can't find it. There it is. But along the top of the page. Okay, that's just not. I can't find it right now, guys. Let me see. Let me try this one more time. <sighs> Sorry about this. No. Because, see, I can't see the drop down menus. Oh, wait a minute. No. There it is. If you go to the, the home page, It'll come up and across the top, it'll say products, about Cerule, join us, shop now. Under the about Cerule tab is a button that says our science. And the our science is where you can find all of the research that has been done, mostly by people trying to prove that Cerule doesn't do what they say it does. And their conclusions are that the Cerule products do exactly what they say they can do. So, like I said, I'm not asking you to go out and buy anything today. Read the science and decide for yourself if it's something you might want to try. You can either buy it straight from the website. You can contact me at my email address if you have any other questions, which is right there at semiretiredbob.yahoo.com. So if you have any questions, 
send me an email. Doesn't have to be school questions if you have questions about carnivore, questions about my property in Texas, questions about anything. You can send me an email. I some days take a while to get to it, but I do try to answer every email that comes in. And it appears we have reached the five minute mark, and there's still 33 of you here hanging out. So let me, since I'm sort of out of things to say, let me hit you with this. This is what we're celebrating two years of. This is where I was two years ago. Hello everyone, semi-retired Bob here. Welcome back to the channel. Before I get into today's topic, I'm going to give you a very brief recap of what happened to me over the last year and some change and why I haven't made any videos. There, that was me two years ago. Um... I don't think I need any other explanation. If you have any last-minute questions, now's the time to get them in. we got about three and a half minutes left in the live stream. If I get a good question, I can go over by a little bit. But barring that, don't forget the two-hour special live stream with guests celebrating my birthday plus having a live Q&A for my two-year anniversary is three weeks from today on May the 10th. It'll be from 2.30 to 4.30. If we run a little long, we run a little long. No big deal, but I want to thank each and every one of you for being here today. It's been a fantastic live stream, and that's really what this live stream is all about. I might have some things written down on a sheet of paper that I want to talk about. Oh, my goodness, I forgot. I do have to do cover one more thing here real quick before I let you go. Um, sorry about this. This should have been done a long time ago, but Sandra. You have seen her um, as One Hope for All is her handle. She's in a lot of chats. She sent me a cast iron skillet that is no stick, so it's like a texture, but it works really well. And she also sent me from my wish list a package of pop rivets that I will need when I go to put a door and windows in my shipping container. So thank you very much for all of that, Sandra. I really do appreciate that. Um, I wish I would have remembered to do that earlier, but I, I was just getting ready to say I may have things written down on a sheet in front of me to talk about, but it seems like the best live streams happen when you guys make comments and I'm just answering questions or comments and we're just talking back and forth. It's a good... It's a good chance to get to know each other even better because I, when I go out and record my videos while I'm walking around, I do feel like I'm talking to you guys because you will eventually see it. And I am talking to you guys, but I like these live streams better because we get a lot quicker back and forth rather than me posting a video and then waiting on the comment section. So that's why I really like these, these live streams. And I hope you guys like these live streams too. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. One of those old 7.3 diesels, those things would run forever. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's live stream as much as I did. Thank you guys for being here. Don't forget, get out there, be 1% better. Today, tomorrow, every day. Have a great day, folks. We'll see you in the next one.